Hello, welcome to Guitars for Bars. I'm your host, James. Today we're going to do, we're going to start the final clear on the back. Actually do the final clear on the back of this one. And then later in the video, we'll flip it over, sand the front, and do the final clear on the, the front. Now this time, you can't see it because it's already on the other side. But I mask off the front so that I wouldn't get any overspray on it. And it's not sitting on parchment paper, it's sitting right on the piece of wood. So I have masking tape based down on the wood. Now I'm going to go ahead and spray this and then show you the picture. Now if you didn't see the video before it, I'm just going to show you this real quick. How smooth this is, even though I painted it with a brush. You can see now since it's been sanded, hopefully, that there are that the surface is level and smooth. There's tiny little bits of, of texture yet from the paint. But since this is a matte finish that I'm using, that's not really going to matter. I'm going to use pretty close to a whole can here on the back, if not a whole can. I'm going to build it up nice and thick and create a good shell to go over this acrylic paint. Okay, here's the back coat while it's wet. I've got the whole can on it. The last one was pretty wet. It's going to have a few imperfections probably. But if you saw the other video when I did this, you might remember how crooked the reflection of the light was in the finish and you can see now you can almost see a good real real good reflection of my the of the ceiling light where the actually those are skylights where the lights coming in i mean you can really see what that looks like the corrugated clear fiberglass stuff up there so uh you can see the reflection from the uh led light that i use look it's almost straight so you can see there that we've got a pretty smooth finish on it. I mean, that's the best way to show you until it's dry. Once it's dry, we'll get it out and we'll see what the textured finish looks like and exactly how flat it is. All right. See you in a couple hours. It's been 24 hours. The back is dry. But we got a little bit of weirdness going on. I'm going to chalk it up to... Hardware store equipment, but you can see how the back of the headstock is flat. It all has the same texture. It's looking pretty good for the back of the headstock. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's the neck. Look at that. That is smooth. Pretty cool, huh? Let's check the, the, the heel. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, now we're going to see the weirdness if it shows up on the screen. It's not really showing up too good. That's kind of disappointing. I really want you guys to see that. I've got a right here. Now we can see it. There it is. That little dark spot. You can't see it that good in the picture on here. Maybe there. There it is. There it is. Now we got it right there. That is one of the screws the JB Weld over one of the screws. Now when I put this one together, those last couple screws needed a little bit more JB Weld, so I hastily mixed some up and put it on there to fill them in. And I'm thinking that maybe I didn't mix it that good. The screw over here in the same spot, you can see it a little bit, but this is totally, totally different. It's darker and duller than all the rest of the stuff. So uh, it didn't show up on the primer. It didn't show up in the paint. It didn't show up in the first round of clear. When I sanded it, when I wet sanded the back and everything, when it was dry, you could see all the screw holes. But, you know, I didn't think anything was going to happen. And then I put the clear on it, and there you have. That one showed up real well, and the other one showed up just a little bit. Now, there's four others that didn't show up at all. And if you saw the earlier videos, this whole area where I glued the neck on... Is all JB Weld and there's none of it there so uh, either that was that poor batch of JB Weld I had with the really runny white stuff and I had trouble figuring out how to mix it accurately because it's supposed to be half and half but you know if one's real thick and one's real thin you're not gonna be able to get that very good so I think I had a bad batch of JB Weld combined with I'm using Rust-Oleum which is not the kind of stuff you want to use on a guitar anyways. But this is a cheap one. This is, well, you saw this. This is two 
pawn shop guitars mashed together. So anyway, let's just look at their overall finish so we get an idea of what we were trying to get in the first place. Flatness. Brush strokes, you saw the other videos, lots of brush strokes. Now, no brush strokes. You see the image, the graphics, which obviously was done with a brush, but you don't see the strokes. It's all flat. That's what you want to get if you're painting a guitar. Perfectly flat. Perfectly filled in. Hopefully, no JB Weld spots, but you want that perfect flatness. All right, we'll be doing the front in a couple days. I'm gonna let this harden up a little bit. Well, that was making me crazy. So, I sprayed the back again. And now, it's pretty much gone. So it's sealed in. You can see, it's hard to see on the camera. There's a little bit of one there. You can barely see from, from where I'm at, you can't see it on the camera. I'm going to show you guys, but you can't see it. Well, okay, there's a little bit of one. But you can see all six of the screw holes now. But just barely. They're really, really, really hard to see. you got to know what you're looking for. So I'm satisfied with the way that turned out. I am going to let this dry for about a week. Because I touched it and put a dent in it that I had to sand out. This stuff takes forever to get hard. So we're going to leave it sit for about a week before we do anything else to it. It's been seven days. You can kind of see a little bit of a dent right there and a little dent right there. Those are dents that I put in it because I flipped it over after only one day. And, and then I, I guess from the plywood, put a little Mars in it. So I gave it another coat of clear, which if you remember, pretty much got rid of the the JB Weld stuff, you can still kind of see where the screws were, but it's not really bad. And then uh, it filled those in, but as it dried all week and shrunk down, the little dents kind of reappeared. I'm not going to worry about them because there's ones just like this in the back of the Skull Rock guitar already. And, you know, I just finished that a month or so ago, and I've been playing it off and on around the house. And I think I might have got a little ding in it from the belt buckle. So... Just a reminder, this Rust-Oleum paint is not the kind of stuff you want to use on an expensive instrument. This was a body from one guitar, a neck from another guitar. Both guitars came from a pawn shop. Neither one of them were in the best shape when I got them. So this is pretty much just, you know, the cheapest way you can do a cool looking paint job and just a way to show you the techniques. Now the next guitar we do, the Solo V, I'm using the expensive stuff. And I just bought the hardener for the primer the other day, and it was $47. Just the hardener, the catalyst for the primer. So, I mean, you're talking spending a couple hundred bucks to get the paint that you need to do this with automotive finishes. But if you're doing this kind of work a lot, or if you've got like several guitars you want to do, that's the way to go. So I'm going to flip this over and we're going to sand uh, the front. I'm going to show you the worst part of the front, the roughest part. I'm going to smooth that out and then we're going to spray the clear on it and leave it sit for another week. A real quick view of the neck because I know some of you are probably wondering about that. It is nice and smooth. You can see the, the reflection on it. Nice and smooth. It's got that little bit of texture, the matte finish. It's very nice. Wow, look what the blue tape did to that finish. If you leave it on for a week, look at that. It textured that Rust-Oleum paint. This is the last one I'm going to do with that stuff. Woo! You can't do it right with this at all. I'm going to have to sand that a little bit. Okay, you see what it looks like. I'm going to sand it with uh, probably the 400 and maybe some 600 and then we'll clear it. I've used a lot of time just showing you how bad this stuff is for, for a guitar. So I'm just going to sand this off camera and then show you what it looks like when I got done sanding. And spray the clear on it 
and show you what it looks like when it's got all the clear on it and then we're just going to leave this thing set for a week put it back together and move on to the next guitar because this stuff is unacceptable for a guitar finish it is crap that's the only word i got for it. it's crap so we'll try to find some other spray finish that works better but uh there aren't too many because most of the ones i've tried so far you can scratch them really easy with your thumbnail so with that being said i'm going to get this work done i sanded a little bit i'm hoping that you can kind of see maybe how far down the graphics are from the surface of the paint it's kind of hard to tell but i got plenty of plenty of clear there to sand off and i'm using the 400 grit with the uh, black foam pad the real thin foam pad so i just want to let you know and it's it's going to take a little bit of sand and i don't want to go to the 320 because i'm on the front so i'm just going to work on it till i get that pretty much smoothed out i may leave a little bit of it and just throw the next coats on real thick uh like i said i'm getting kind of disgusted with this hardware store stuff I just didn't want to have to do this all by myself. I thought I'd let you guys share in the enjoyment of sitting here swirling the sandpaper around, trying to get a level surface. It's not going too quickly. The stuff is thick and uh, tape really put some deep dents in it. I'm very, very, very disappointed in this Rust-Oleum stuff. So this is a technique you would use if you're using more expensive paint. Of course, the car paint, uh, it's not going to dent like this uh, unless you really do it too soon. If you give it a week like I did this, it'll be hard as a rock and you probably won't even be able to sand it without something super strong. But uh, I'm going to stop here and continue on later. Okay, I mask off the back. To hopefully avoid that overspray problem I had before and as soon as I get the paint on the front uh, and it's set up I'm gonna flip it I'm gonna pick it up and hang it up and then get this tape off the back to try to avoid the tape problem I had on the front okay wish me luck okay <clears throat> I have had enough of the rust-oleum matte clear enamel it has given me nothing but trouble. Uh, right there in the last coat, I ended up with black specks again. There's one right there. Two of them. You can see them there. There's another one down here. So the can shot out black specks right there at the end. I used six cans on this thing. Out of those six cans, three of them clogged up. And I actually stuck a nail down in through the valve to get the stuff to spray again you shouldn't do that but i've been using spray paint enough i figured well i'm not going to blow up if i just stick the little nail down there two of them the stuff just shot out so i stuck the cap back on real quick and just kept pouring it on till it quit spraying or clogged up again and then this last one it just clogged up on the last coat so i drove the nail in it pulled the nail out put the cap back on it and then it sprayed okay up until it spit that black stuff out so that's it no more rust-oleum matte clear enamel on guitars i'm not using that crap anymore i love their primer but this stuff is just not going to work so i'm going to wrap this video up get it posted and you guys can see the finished product when i put it together and play it because i'm going to have to dig that stuff out and I might have to sand the whole top and I might just try to buff it a little bit or I may end up just saying screw it and leave it just like it is because like I said I've had it with this rust oleum stuff all right uh, please hit like and subscribe and please share this and uh, come back for more cool guitars